Good morning, everyone. I'm Jian. Yeah, a research chemist of China National Silk Museum. I'm really happy and excited to organize the first bond with the help of Dr. Zhao Feng, director of the China National Silk Museum, and uh, Dr. Dominic Carden from CNIS. I was busy communicating and uh, coordinating with speakers, demonstrators, and uh, participates when I was preparing the bond. This morning, I'm back. I'm back to my research field. Today, it's, it's my great honor to get an opportunity for giving a talk about natural dyes in Xinjiang textile in this international symposium. This slide shows a photo of two archaeologists working in desert. The special climate, very dry, leads to well-preserved objects, such as broad, broad, broad vessels, pottery works, wooden objects, excavated from that area. Also, there are uh, hundreds and thousands of extraordinary textiles discovered in Xinjiang. To our knowledge, Xinjiang is one of the most important areas on the Silk Road, which was considered as cultural and uh, trading bridge linking between East and uh, West from the early Iron Age to the 11th century. Foreign explorers investigated and uh, excavated ancient objects in Central Asia from the later 19th century to the early 20th century. Uh, after a few years, Chinese scholars began to move in archaeology of Xinjiang, and more and more people paid attention on the textiles in the past two decades. In addition, Chinese governments have encouraged collaboration between foreign and Chinese archaeologists since 1990. Uh, in fact, uh, archaeologists and scholars neglected textiles, whereas they focused on metal, pottery, and uh, wooden objects in the past. However, archaeological textiles definitely contain a lot of important information, such as motifs, shapes, uh, structure, weaving, and uh, dyeing techniques. As for me, I am very interested in use of dyes in archaeological textiles, in particular, Xinjiang textile with many fabulous colors. When I was young, I liked to read detective novels. My favorite authors, Agatha Christie and uh, Sancho Murimula, ah, Sancho Murimula, the Japanese author. I wished I would be a wise detective and be able to solve some mystery cases. After graduated, uh, after graduation from university, I was lucky to have a job in the National Silk Museum as a special detective working on dye analysis of ancient textile. Uh, I would like to give my thanks to Dr. Zhao Feng, who has been supporting my research for 15 years. In particular, he applied for big funds from government, so I have two powerful tools for my research. Yes, here. Here is an HPLC, my main machine for dye analysis of 
archaeological textiles in our laboratory. It gives information about the structure of dye components. The other tool is a micro-Raman spectrometer, which is used to analyze very tiny samples with an ultra-sensitive -sens method, SIRS. Yeah, this slide shows uh, where the archaeological textile I analysis were from. All archaeological objects was excavated from nearly 20 burial sites in Xinjiang. Yeah, this map. This map shows the location of the several important burial sites, such as Xiaohe, Xiaohe, uh, Yingpan, uh, Korea, Sampra, Nia. Interestingly, most, uh, yeah, interestingly, most of the textile were discovered in southeast Xinjiang. I think the special climate and environment at that area gives rise to the situation. Yeah, dial lubia tinctorum, yeah, dial matter, is a queen of the red dyes in antiquity, which was widely used in Euro Asia. Uh, I identify, identify this red dye containing the main compounds, alizarin and purpurin, in a few string skirts. Excavated from Xiaohe burial sites, dating back to the later Bronze Age, uh, about in the 2000 uh, BC. I thought, yeah, those black and yellow woolen cloak would be dyed with tiny and uh, flavonoid dyes, respectively. However, there's nothing detected. Thus, those textiles should be made of black and yellow wool Fibers, I mean the original colors of sheep. In addition, dyer's matter, yeah, rubia tinctorum, was most likely the earliest natural dyes used in China. The most important textile objects of the early Iron, Iron Age are unearthed from Wupu, Hami, located in East Xinjiang. This slide shows a representative textile of Wupu tomb, embroidered, embroidered woolen fabric with triangles. This well-preserved embroidery was dyed with matter, indigo, and a proper tree. There, there, were, there were two species of papyrus grow in Gebi. It is not difficult to distinguish between these two papyrus due to the different shape, different shape of leaves. However, we are not able to identify the papyrus species by eyes when they are used to dye fiber because both are yellow. Fortunately, HPLC profile show different uh, ratios of rutile 70 glucoside and uh, rutile 70 glucuronide between popular populus urantinka and the populus pronouncer. Based on the ratio of the two main flavonoids, yellow triangle was probably died with the proper pronouncer. Uh, two points in this slide I would like to share with everyone. First, the baby mummy was wrapped with tie dyed curls. And to my knowledge, uh, this should be the earliest tie dyed textile in China. Second, HPLC results 
indicates that Kermit was used to give pinkish red for objects. Uh, a big carminic acid peak and a small carminic acid peak are shown in this slide. Also, a lizarin and purpurin are detected. I think this object was dyed with kermis, not rubia tinctorum. A lizarin and purpurin were probably transferred from the other textiles. Kermis are only found on the Kermis oak. The insect can be found around the Mediterranean, such as France, Spain, Morocco, Algeria, as well as in Middle East. Kermis identified in Zagreb textile suggests that the exchange of goods has begun before the Silk Road was opened up. Interestingly, Russia, Russia scientists also found Kermis in Patrick textile. So my question is, how did the people transport the Kermis to Patrick and Xinjiang? At the same period, from 500 to 300 BC, Another insect dye, uh, Polish cochineal, was found in a skirt discovered in Su Beixi of Turpan due to the fact that a big carminic uh, acid peak and a small carminic acid peak were shown in the HPLC profile of the red extract in the skirt. In addition, two pigs assigned to a lie, a lizarin and a purpurin, indicate that a mixture of kermis and dyer's matter was used to dye red. This is a common situation for dyeing red because dyers wanted to save insect dyes, which were much expensive than the vegetable dye. Uh, I think some people may be a little bit confused about uh, Kermis and uh, Polish cochineal. I hope the most of you can figure out how to distinguish between the two insect dyes based on the report of Anne and her co-workers. Uh, actually, the HPLC ca characterization of insect dyes in cultural heritage objects were first, firstly reported by Waters and his co-worker. The Silk Road was opened up officially during the Han Dynasty, around the first century BC. Quite a lot of silk products were exported to west from Xinjiang. Niya is a famous archaeological site in which many silk textile was unearthed. Red dyes in Niya textile include two major species, yeah, Rubia tinctorum and Rubia cordifolia. Also, a mixture of three anthraquino dyes, lac, Polish cochineal, and the dyer's matter. Yeah, Rubia tinctorum. Luck is, luck is the third insect dye appeared in, in this presentation. It, it, it was ori uh, originated from India and other countries in South Asia. I detected a couple of flavonoids in some yellow silk textile of Nia. The common one is uh, rutile, uh, rutile 7 o glucoside, but so far I haven't determined the plant source of rutile-based dye, because to my knowledge, at least 20 
flavonoid dyes contain the mainly luteolin 7 O glucoside. Another yellow dye, which was uh, fran fran frequently used in Nia textile, is bark of the cock tree. Its main compon component is berberry. Cock tree was grown in central China, which was most likely exported to Xinjiang during the Han and the Jin dynasty. Uh, Yingpan too is famous for its uh, occupants, Yingpan man. He won a fine red uh, woolen rod and an embroidery pair of trousers, which display not only the yellow design of Hellenistic motifs, new the puppy and the eastern weaving pattern, goats and the cattle with Pomegranate, pomegranate trees. I found the dyes used in Yingpan textile are similar to those in Niya textile. In another Han and Jin dynasty tombs, flavonoid based dyes were identified in yellow and green textiles. Here are two typical dyes shows Flavino, flavo, flavo glucoside and uh, flavino sulfate, which are suggested to well and uh, tamarids. Both of them are local plants in northwest China. Uh, I just analyzed a few samples of the Tang and the Song dynasties. Back of Cock tree was identified in a green skirt with printed flora. Interestingly, Luxburg, a typical yellow, yeah, Luxburg, a typical yellow dye grow in Iran and uh, Afghanistan was found in a Kurs rock discovered in in Kashka. It makes sense that Kashka is actually not far away from the Central Asia. Uh, how to distinguish one indigo species from another one? This is still a big problem for me. The ratio of indigo tea and uh, indigo ruby varied even the textile were dyed with the same indigo species. And sometimes a couple of unknown peaks showing absorption maxi maximum at around the 600 nanometer also appeared in the archaeological textiles. This slide shows a preliminary conclusion. In the Bronze Age, matter was the only natural dye for coloring woolen textiles. More and more dyes were used in early Iron Age. Two insect dyes were imported into Xinjiang from west. In the Han and the Jin dynasties, Xinjiang dyes still favored local dyes except cock tree. Also, the Silk Road was opened, opened up at that time. Uh, because of limited samples of the Tang and the Song dynasties, I found uh, quite a few that's used, such as cautery, Luxburg, and uh, Madder Indigo. Uh, this presentation gives results of dye analysis from archaeological textiles dating from the 2000 BC to the uh, 13th century. Uh, if you are interested in the, in the use of dye, natural dyes in European and Asia textile from the 17th century to the 19th century, I'm happy to invite you to visit my exhibition set up in the conservation gallery this week. So thank you for your attention.